Good morning. Let's start the daily discussion on current affairs. First topic that we take today, which regarding India's hauling cotton production. India is a major cotton producing country, but there is like all in the production in recent times. India's cotton production is facing a serious challenge from the pink coal war. Best that damages the crop and reduces the yield. Conventional method of pest control, such as pesticides and genetic modified seeds, not been very effective in containing the problem. Okay. So, Cotton is an important crop in India that serves multiple purposes. Provides foods in the form of cotton seed oil, feed in the form of protein rich cotton seed cake, fiber food in the textile industry. Okay. So, food, fiber, okay, and oil. So, the three things are produced from cotton. The growth of cotton production in India from 2000 to 2001 was significantly driven by the genetically modified hybrid cotton, as popularly known as BT cotton. So, the growth of cotton production in India from 2001 to 2001 was initially driven by the adoption of the genetically modified cotton hybrid known as the BT cotton. These hybrids were engineered to resist the American gold worm insect pest due to increase yield because gold worm is a major disease of the cotton and this BT cotton was able to resist it. So, it was genetically modified. So the particular strain for the American gold one that was able to affect it. So that led to significant increase in cotton production. The success of BT cotton was challenged by the emergence of pink gold one. American gold one was taken care by the BT cotton variety, but the pink gold one, PBW, began interesting cotton crops in various states. Unlike the American gold one, a uh, pink gold worm which causes others primarily feeding on cotton and it develops resistance to BT proteins over time. Pink gold worm develops resistance to the BT protein. Okay, so the time. Traditional insecticides have efficacy against pink bull worm, so alternative approaches were explored. One such method is mating disruption. It involves using artificial hormones to prevent mating and egg laying by the pink bull worm moths. Okay. Two products the pink bull worm PP uh, knot and the splat. Were deployed to implement mating disruption. 
if we not ingest a dispenser with pheromones to attract male PBW moths, like plant PBW is an impulsion formulation, delivering the pheromone which products and to reduce the pig bowler populations and increase water feed. So, this is the BT cotton affected by the pink bone worm. Although pink and that uh, organ, the BT cotton has this temper resistance for the American bone worm, the pink bone worm has able to develop resistance to the gene in the BT cotton and spread in the crop. So, methods develop to check it. Cotton production in India. Cotton has historically been the world's largest producer. So India has historically been the largest producer of cotton, accounting for approximately 25% of global cotton output. Okay. India Okay. India is facing a significant decline in cotton export to the current financial year. This decline is attributed to multiple factors, including a shift by harvest to more profitable crop like oil seeds and pulses, leading to a drop in cotton production. Due to the fall in production of cotton due to the pink bone worm, farmers started shifting from cotton to other crops like oil seeds to price increasing as well as pulses food price also on a rising speed. A daily minimum temperature of 14 degrees centigrade is required for germination and 20 degrees centigrade for the degrees centigrade is required for a proper crop growth. During the uh, a fruiting phase, the daily temperature ranging from 27 degree to Okay, 32 degree centigrade and, uh, and, and uh, full light are needed. The cotton picking period from mid September to November must have bright sunny day to ensure a good quality of, of the product. The requirement. Okay. Factors that are contributing to the decline in cotton production climate change. Climate change has, has a significant impact. Okay on cotton production. Okay. So, uh, erratic rainfall patterns, changing climate patterns have led to unpredictable and irregular rainfall, which is detrimental to cotton crops. Cotton requires specific amount of water at various growth stages, and irregular rainfall can lead to water stress affecting the crop yield and quantity.
ओके तो एक्सट्रीम वेदर इवेंट्स इंक्रीजिंग फ्रीक्वेंसी एंड इंटेंसिटी ऑफ एक्सट्रीम वेदर इवेंट्स सच एज ब्लॉट्स ब्लॉट्स एंड हरिकेन्स कैन डिवास्टेट कॉटन इन फ्रॉड कैन डैमेज कॉटन प्लांट्स एंड फ्रॉड कैन लीड टू एटस कैसिटेंस स्टंटेड ग्रोथ ऑफ द प्लांट्स देयर बाय इफेक्टिंग द प्रोडक्टिविटी temperature extremes rising temperature can also affect cotton by altering the flowering and fruit patterns making them less productive pest and disease water is vulnerable vulnerable to the age of pest and disease and several factors have exacerbated this problem emergence of resistant strains over time pest and disease have evolved to become more resistant to conventional pesticides and control methods that made increasingly challenging for cotton farmers to manage these threats effectively monoculture farming continuous cotton cultivation of seeds and field year after year and create favorable conditions for build up of pest and disease this practice common in some regions due to the risk of like infestation because farmers who go for cotton cultivation they carry out the cotton cultivation for the for a repeatedly this affects the productivity to a considerable extent why right? because so uh, continuous cultivation of the same crop okay so has its negative impact and the disease and the uh, that uh, pest remain in the field okay and uh, that have the ultimate productivity i input cost The cost of agriculture and input has risen steadily over the years, affecting the profitability of cotton farmers. Seed, high quality cotton seed, are essential for a good yield. The cost of purchasing improved cotton variety, the genetically modified cotton seed, the resistance to certain pests, often come with licensing fee. Because you know, these genetically modified cotton seeds are from the multinational seed companies like monsanto of usa so every time so they charge a licensing fee making the seed a costly item for the farmers why because this license fee is every time to be paid okay then uh, fertilizer pesticides the cost of fertilizer and pesticides is not to maintain cotton crop has also gone up farmers need to invest in these inputs to protect their crop and maintain the yield labor and machinery labor cost for planting harvesting and maintaining cotton crops as well as machinery expenses add to the overall input cost competition for other crops cotton faces competition for land and water resources from other for, from other more profitable or less risky crop like pulses and pulses okay so uh, profitability farmers may switch to crop like pulses and pulses because they offer higher market prices and return compared to cotton pulses and pulses so they give more return to the farmers than cotton because consistent oil seed gives higher return so farmer became interested over cultivation of pulses and oil seeds than cultivating cotton that is another reason drought resistance of alternative crop may be more resilient to changing climate conditions making them a more attractive option for farmers in regions prone to water scarcity Right. So, uh, a combination of climate change and related challenges, increased pest and disease pressure, rising input cost, and competition from other crop has contributed to the decline in cotton farming. Decline in cotton production has far reaching implications. So, first is the textile industry. The textile industry is a cornerstone of India's economy. employing millions of people and contributing significantly to the country's economy a decline in domestic cotton production can have adverse effect on the economy because we 
are more dependent on the homegrown cotton than on imported cotton for our mills, textile industries. If it is not available, the production falls, then so it will have negative impact on the textile industry. High input costs, okay. Reduced domestic cotton availability may result in higher cotton prices in the domestic market. This can increase the cost of raw materials for textile manufacturers, potentially leading to reduced competitiveness in the global market. Job losses. The textile sector is a major employer, especially in rural area. A decline in cotton production can lead to reduced demand for labor in the cotton farming and ginning sector. So, cotton farming, cotton ginning. Okay. So, so, both are labor intensive and if uh, cotton productivity is less, then so it will affect the or it will have its adverse impact on the labor market. India is a significant exporter of textile and garment products. A drop in cotton production can affect the quantity and quality of cotton available for textile manufacturing, potentially impacting the export potential of the sector. Dependence on import and domestic cotton production declines, India becomes more reliant on imported cotton to meet the demand of its textile industry. This dependence on imports can have several consequences. So India from a net exporter, it is from a net importer of the cotton from outside. So it will have its negative impact on Indian economy. Dependency, okay. Uh, this dependence on import can have several consequences. Vulnerable to price fluctuation, global cotton price can be volatile, increasing factor for the rates, international trade policies, as weather events, trade policy, and demand supply dynamics. Relying on imported cotton make India vulnerable to price fluctuations, which can affect the cost structure of the textile industry. Right. So, uh, import introduce an element of uncertainty to the supply chains, disruption in global cotton supply chains such as shipping village or trade disputes can impact the timely availability of cotton for Indian textile manufacturing. Because when it is an imported product, so there are not many uh, challenges that are there, okay. so which may interrupt the availability of cotton for the Indian farmers. Indian manufacturers, textile manufacturers. Economic impact of cotton farmers. The decline in cotton production directly affects cotton farmers. Many of whom are smallholders. This has several economic and social consequences. Reduced incomes, lower cotton yield, and profitability can lead to reduced income for cotton farmers. This can exacerbate their financial difficulties due to debt burdens. Rural poverty, cotton farming is a significant source of livelihood in rural area. A decline in cotton production contributes to rural poverty and increased vulnerability as farming households may struggle to meet
ओके तो माइग्रेशन इकोनॉमिक हार्डसिप होता ले लिया एंड गाइस माइग्रेशन तो अर्बन सेंटर्स इट पार्ट्स ऑफ अल्टरनेटिव एम्प्लॉयमेंट प्रोसेस व्हिच कैन स्ट्रेन अर्बन इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एंड सर्विसेज नेक्स्ट स्टेप में द गवर्नमेंट फाइनेंशियल असिस्टेंस गवर्नमेंट प्रोवाइड सब्सिडी टू कॉटन फार्मर्स फॉर एसेंशियल इनपुट्स लाइक सीड्स फर्टिलाइजर एंड पेस्टिसाइड the subsidy aims to reduce the financial burden of farmers and make cotton cultivation more economically viable so government like other agricultural support also support the cotton farmers in the uh, uh, form of essential uh, subsidy of fertilizer and pesticides the minimum support price the government set a minimum support price for cotton ensuring that farmers receive a fair price for their cotton produce This price act as a safety net, protecting farmer from price fluctuations in the market. Crop insurance, the government offer crop insurance scheme that protect farmer against yield losses due to various factors including adverse weather conditions, pest and disease. This helps farmer manage risk and recover losses in the crop phase. Like Pradhan Mantri, Hasan Bima Jodhana also cover the cotton crops. Interest free loans in some cases are also provided with interest free or low interest loans okay, to finance their cotton farming activity. Okay, so farmers are provided for so this okay, then research and development. Oh, uh, interest free loan uh, and low interest loan to finance their cotton farming activity, including purchasing skills, fertilizers, and machinery. Research and development. The GM cotton variety India has invested in the development and production of genetically modified cotton variety and the BT cotton, which are resistant to the bold war pests. These vari varieties reduce the need for chemical pesticides, lowering production cost, and minimizing environmental impact. Climate resilient varieties. Research efforts are focused on developing cotton varieties that are more resilient to effects of climate change, such as drought tolerant and heat resistant strains. This variety can thrive in adverse weather conditions and provide more stable yields. Pest and disease management. Government research institutions work on integrated pest management strategies to control cotton pest and disease sustainably. It includes the development of biological control methods and the promotion of natural predators. Irrigation improvement, drip and sprinkler irrigation. Government has promoted modern irrigation techniques, the drip and sprinkler irrigation, which are more water efficient and help mitigate the impact of erratic rainfall. These methods ensure a consistent water supply and optimum utilization of water to the cotton crops. Canal rehabilitation efforts are made to rehabilitate and modernize the canal system to ensure efficient water distribution for cotton growing regions. So it is so specifically just for the black cotton soil. These soils are very very uh, suitable for cotton cultivation. Okay. So uh, rainwater harvesting encouragement and support are given to farmers for rainwater harvesting practices, which can supplement irrigation during dry spells. Diversification promotion, crop rotation. Farmers are encouraged to practice crop rotation. Involves alternating or alternate cultivation with other crops like horses, oil seeds, or leguminous. This reduces the risk of soil uh, depletion and pest buildup, leading to more sustainable and productive farming practices. Uh, awareness campaign the government conducts awareness campaign and provides training to farmers for the benefits of diversification these campaigns aim to shift the mindset of farmers towards exploring alternative crops and improving overall agricultural resilience challenges persist okay. in the indian cotton sector erratic weather pattern Climate change has led to unpredictable and erratic weather patterns, 
for improving irregular rainfall and more frequent extreme weather events like drought and floods. These conditions pose a significant threat to cotton crop, affecting both yield and quality. Temperature extremes, rising temperature can disrupt the flowering of Rising temperature can disrupt the flowering and fruiting stage of the cotton plant. High temperature Okay. Rising temperature can disrupt the flowering and fruiting with the cotton plants. High temperature during these critical phase can lead to poor food speeds and reduce yield. Pest and disease outbreak, climate change can create favorable conditions for the proliferation of pests and disease, making cotton crops more vulnerable. Warmer temperatures may allow pests to thrive year round, increasing the need for pest management. Fragmented land holdings. Limited adoption of modern farming practices, small and fragmented land holdings in India make it challenging for farmers to adopt modern and mechanized farming practices. Small plots of land may not justify the investment in expensive machinery, limiting productivity. Reduce economy of scale, smaller land holdings often result in reduced economy of scale. Farmers may struggle to negotiate favorable prices for inputs and their overall production cost may be higher compared to large farm. Land degradation, intensive cultivation of small land parcels can lead to soil erosion and degradation, further reducing the long term sustainability of the <coughs> cotton farming. Lack of awareness, limited access to many cotton farmers, especially the remote and marginalized areas. Have limited access to information about the latest agricultural technologies, best practices, and market trends. This lack of awareness can hinder their ability to make informed decisions. Traditional farming practices Some farmers continue to rely on traditional farming practices, a nair of more sustainable and efficient methods that could enhance their crop yield and reduce costs. Weak infrastructure, inadequate transportation. Poor rural infrastructure, including road network, can hinder the timely transportation of cotton corn, farms to market, or processing units. This can lead to post harvest losses and reduce profitability. The limited access to inputs. Okay, so farmer in remote area may face challenges in accessing market to fair prices for their cotton, lack of proper marketing infrastructure and intermediate. The supply chain can lead to low return for farmers. Way forward, research and development investment, resilient varieties, increase investment in research. Okay, increase investment in research and Development is vital for developing cotton varieties that are not only resistant to pests and diseases but also resilient to the effect of climate change. This includes drug tolerant and heat resistant cotton strips. Organic and sustainable farming R&D efforts should also focus on organic and sustainable farming. 
practices that reduce the environmental impact of cotton cultivation, such as promoting natural pest control methods and improving the soil health. Irrigation infrastructure, modernization, investment in irrigation infrastructure. Okay. Each required. Okay. So, rainwater harvesting encourage the adoption of rainwater harvesting at the farm level, allowing farmers to capture and store rainwater for irrigation during the dry spells. Diversification of promotion, crop rotation, promote crop rotation and intercropping to reduce dependence on cotton at the sole cash crop. Encourage the cultivation of complementary crops like horses, oil seed, or leguminous which can improve soil fertility and pest management. Market linkages Okay, so facilitate access to market for alternative crops to ensure that farmers are profitable avenue for diversity. Financial assistance continuation, subsidy and support, continue providing financial assistance to cotton farmers, the form of subsidies on essential inputs, minimum support price and crop insurance scheme. These measures help farmers cope with uh, improved cost and manage risk effectively. Credit access ensures that farmers have access to affordable credit to finance their farming activities, including purchasing imports, equipment, and adopting new technology. Infrastructure improvement, transportation, improved rural and uh, rural uh, road network and transportation infrastructure facilitated the timely and cost effective movement of cotton from farm to market and processing units. This reduces post harvest losses and ensure better return for farmers. Access to inputs, strengthen the supply chain for agricultural inputs, making seeds, fertilizer and pesticides readily available to farmers, especially in the remote areas. Okay. Market facilities develop market infrastructure in rural areas, including storage facility and market yards, create efficient and competitive market for cotton. Okay. So uh, then, uh, market for cotton and other agricultural products. Education extension services expand agricultural extension services to reach more cotton farmers, providing them with knowledge about the first largest farming technologies, best practices, and sustainable farming methods. Farmer training. Conduct training program and workshop to educate farmers on modern farming techniques, best management, and water saving practices. Digital tools, unlike or utilize digital platforms and mobile apps to disseminate information to farmers, including weather forecasts, market price, and 
harming tips and any other support during the harming process. The decline in cotton production in India is a multifaceted challenge encompassing economic, environmental, and agricultural dimensions. To overcome the challenges, India must prioritize research, technology adoption, degradation infrastructure, diversification, financial support, infrastructure development, and farmer education. By embracing a comprehensive approach, India can revitalize its cotton sector, strengthen rural livelihood, So, uh, India must prioritize research, technology adoption, mediation, infrastructure diversification, financial support, infrastructure development, and farmer education. Okay. Uh, by embracing a comprehensive approach, India can revitalize its cotton sector, tender rural livelihood, and ensure the resilience of this crucial crop in the face of evolving pressures and opportunities. Okay. In the Cherial School Painting, a Cherial School Painting from the Telangana and a woman tosses ship yellow to a, and a handcrafted bell metal with a rhyme of the omen with the attention from Satisgad and the gift that First Lady or the spouses of heads of state. Okay. So we gather for the upcoming show, uh, gather for the first from G20 summit. They received during their visit to the Indian Agricultural Research at the Pusa campus. The century old art general of the uh, Cherials school painting illustrates tales and legends in the narrative. So the century old art of uh, Cherry, uh, Cherial School painting illustrates tales and legends in narrative stories. Cherial scores have geographical indications, practice which is granted to products with a specific geographical origin, the attributes of a reputation derived from the from their origin. Cherial school painting, also known as the Cherial painting or the Nakshi art, is a traditional style of storytelling art and originated in the Telangana village of Cherial. The vivid colors, detailed workmanship, and the deep narrative substance distinguish these school paintings. The importance: the history of the Cherial school painting dates back to the 15th century. The history, so it has been handed down through generations of an artist community known as the Nakashi. 
This art form was traditionally utilized to tell stories, particularly during performance of the traditional shadow puppetry, later known as the Tolu Homalata. Materials and Mythology Methodology Aerial paintings are often done on khadi cloths or traded paper stores. The artists create their works with the natural colors and dyes. Aerial school painting is a monument to Telangana's rich cultural legacy and the artistic talent of the Axi community. Its type is timeless narratives and intricate craftsmanship, continue to enchant art fans and storytellers. Then the next, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Camp. Ethiopia recently announced that it has filled with its Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam on the Nile River. For the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, the GERD, formerly known as the Millennium Dam, is located in the Bani Sangul uh, Gumuch region of the Ethiopia near the Badal Sudan, located on the Blue Nile on the main tributary of the Nile River. Capacity at 6.45 gigawatt. The dam will be as the largest hydropower plant in Africa when completed. It is an overload compacted concrete gravity type dam comprising two power stations, three spill wedge, and a saddle tower. Okay, so uh, the main dam is 145 meter height and 71,780 in long. Uh, it will create a reservoir covering 1875 square kilometers and contains 74 billion cubic meters of water. Right? This is the largest dam of African continent. Two, Egypt and Sudan clear the massive 4.2 billion uh, GERD. The dam will severely reduce the share of Nile water. The Rishi and Hap repeatedly ask Ethiopia to stop feeding it until they have all reached an agreement on how it should be worked. Because it's an interstate river which passes through so many countries. Okay, so other countries. Okay, so uh, it will create reservoir covering. Okay, so Egypt and Sudan are fighting over it because this being an inter country river passing through more than one country. If one country use its potentiality more, the other country will be affected. That is why so uh, Ethiopia and Sudan are in dispute over this particular uh, project by the government of. One country, okay, Ethiopia, against consulting the uh, consulting uh, Egypt and Sudan. Fine. Then the Panigiri artifacts, the Panigiri artifacts dating from 200 BC to 400 C and discovered in 1942 are on display at the New York Metropolitan Museum of Art. The uh, Hanigiri Buddhist site is located one of the most important finds in this iconography in this millennium. Uh, the Hanigiri, meaning Villa of Snakepur, is a small village in the state of Telangana. The uh, Kronas discovered at the Hanigiri are very important as they are among the past found south of the The same Thurana. Uh, as a uh, panel that shows both Mahayana and Hindu schools of thought. There is evidence from the Panigiri that shows the depiction of Buddha and it can date this change from historical and spiritual identity. There is a tra transition to uh, canonization and rituals. The monograph of the event of the image of the Buddha, very like say Roman toga with folded craft in the limestone. Next is the Vidya uh, Samikha Kendra. This education is pushing states to open Vidya Samikha Kendra. 
okay uh, under the national digital education architecture okay so uh, Vidya Samitha Kendra is a data repository between data from all schemes run by the Ministry of Education. The Vidya Samitha Kendra control room will collect data to track key performance indicators as well as analyze data collected from government schemes using AI and machine learning. The operation of the Vidya Samitha Kendra centers are managed by an open source platform uh, run by the C Cube software. Advisory rule. By the EK Step Foundation, non profit organization, book under Farmer General India, Nandan Nilekam. Currently, the center has allocated funds ranging from 2 to 5 crore to each day for adopting and embarking the Vidya Samitha Kendra. Features The repository will include regularly updated data forms, PM Potion Midday Mill Program, teacher training data from National Initiative for School Heads and Teacher Policy Assessment Portal. Textbook content from digital infrastructure for knowledge sharing, Diksha portal, full dropout and attendance related data on unified district for education, the India ES Plus, student learning outcome for the National Achievement Survey. Performance Trading Index evaluate uh, school education system in the state and in the level. Function multiple platform at center state and district level and communicate with each other using requests and responses to seamlessly integrate data at all levels on the platform. This is in line with the National Education Policy 2020, talking about developing operational standards for making data open source. Okay. Then coming to the question. Highlight the Central Asian and Greco Bactrian elements in the Gandhara art. Gandhara School of Art was the epitome of cultural revolution in present days, West Pakistan and East Afghanistan, during the Kushana rule of which Gandhara sculpture was an important part to depict sculptures of Buddha. Okay, so how the graphical location of other art has affected interaction of various artistic components, the graphical position of the region was at the crossroads of cultural exchange, which resulted into the interaction of artistic components. This area witnessed the advent of number of foreign power and political configuration, ranging from the Greek Bactrian to Kushanos. Thus, Gandhara style was an amalgam of realistic. Roman, Iranian, and indigenous art. The Central Asian and the Greco Bactrian elements in the Nandara art it can be observed in the form of Buddha's wavy hair and drap reach covering both uh, shoulders, put where Buddha saw under the protection of the Greek god uh, Heracles standing with his claw on, on and so on. In fact, the very concept of man god is attributed to the Greeks. The Buddha's mythological statue, uh, statue can also be related to Greeks. For example, of the Gandhara art depicts both Buddha and the Greek god uh, Heracles uh, from Greek mythology. The uh, stupo plasters, which was commonly observed in Greek art, was widely used in Gandhara artwork for the decoration of the monastic and cult building. Roman influence. It is evident from the sculpture of the Gandhara Gautama Buddha with a youthful Apollo like face dressed in garments resembling the sense of Roman imperial statues. Gandhara sculpture incorporated many motifs and techniques from classical Roman art too, as seen from the vine stores, the uh, chevrous bearing garlands, a trigon, and the centaurs. Additionally, the Gandhara art grew from the anthropopoetic. Uh, Traditions of Roman religions, the realistic sculpture of Buddha is also associated with the Romans. Central Asian influence 
in gandhara art specific types of buddhist art sculptured were elaborately constructed paintings vast relations sculptures which he decorated secular especially called buildings columns clusters mainly derived from the korinath uh, orders and other architectural elements usually had magnificent plastic arrangement temples built in the area influenced Okay, so temples built in the area influenced by Gandhara art are normally included central square structures with circumvolatory uh, corridors, a uh, swat and mirror. The idea of circumvolatory corridors was undoubtedly of Iranian origin. Higher temples with such corridors appeared in Iran from the Akamanite time. The uh, for the ground plans of the monastery display many varieties. When the space was limited, the blue plants could be applied, combining two or three isolated parts with different functions. The sacred one temple with a large stupa in the middle, living quarters with monks, cells, and the prayer hall, etc. Prayer hall, etc. This architectural pattern was widespread in Central Asia, both in the Kushana period, as in the uh, Payat uh, Tepe, and the latter, as in the Ajina Tepe. The above influences can be well justified because of strategic location of the Gandhara school. Thus, in this regard, it can be claimed that the art that flourished in the Gandhara valley was a blend of different cultures. Fine. Then, coming to the MCQs, consider the following statement regarding the Cherial school painting. The Cherial school painting is a uh, primary done on canvas using oil based colors. Wrong. The paintings traditionally uh, uh, serve as visual aid during the storytelling performances, particularly in the shadow puppetry theater, right? The Cherian school painting ordered in the Cherian village of Telangana. That's right. The theme of the Cherian school painting are limited to story from the Indian epic like Ramayana and the Mahabharata. That's wrong. So, two and three are correct. Recently, the first Bubble Symposium, the first was right. So, uh, it's going to be held, it was going to be held in India. Local Symposium on Farmers' Rights. Okay, so GSMR is going to be held. So, India will host the first Global Symposium on Farmers' Rights. Uh, because this year India hosted so many important summits like the SEO Summit, which was held uh, virtually, then the G20 Summit, which India hosted and successfully hosted, and again going to host the, uh, the first. Uh, global Symposium on Farmers' Rights. Okay. Then, uh, uh, Keeling Island, uh, recently seen in news, is located in the following ocean of the world, is the Indian Ocean. Okay. Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, recently news, located in which of the following river? It was the Blue Nile River, so in Ethiopia, but it has its uh, country to Sudan and Egypt. Fine. So, because the European government has built this dam and uh, it has started filling it with water, so this may affect the water flow to uh, the neighboring states, neighboring countries, and uh, so they have expressed their uh, anxiety or their worry over this. They consider the problem statement to get the Goa roadmap for Suriji is an outcome of uh, India's D20 tourism track, that is uh, right. It has been endorsed by all the member countries to achieve sustainable, resilient, and inclusive. So, both 1 and 2 are correct. Consider the following statement regarding the food price index. It measures the monthly change in international price of a basket of food commodities. That is uh, right. It lunch by the food and agricultural organization. So, here both 1 and 2 are correct. The term the uh, vagus nerve uh, 
seen in new recently associated with with the following systems so it is a, it is the largest uh, cranial nerve in the human body okay so in the answer c is the largest cranial nerve in the human body consider the following statement with respect to the dili declaration so it is the outcome of india's first climate summit okay dili declaration is about the g20 the declaration aimed to implement the sendai framework in india is now the both are in dili declaration is it was given the g20 summit Uh, consider the following statement regarding the exercise bright india's navy ins sumedha to participate in this exercise they held that port alexandria in egypt here both one and two are correct then uh, consider the following statement regarding the moisture sheathen is an indigenously developed submersible that's right it is developed under the project samudrayan so this will take three people to uh, the depth of 6000 uh, meter in the ocean to know okay so the shear for both one and two are correct after successful completion of chandrayaan one the chandrayaan three and the aditya mission right now this is time for india to explore the depth of the ocean and this moisture six thousand in india's samudrayaan project to venture into the depth of the ocean no the reality is there right So thank you for watching keep watching regularly